all right what is going on guys welcome back to the channel and today we start the first steps of assembling uh our building my ej205 2.1 liter stroker uh we got our ej257 crank brand new nitrided crank right here and while looking for torque specs on the international subi page they told me to stand this up don't lay it flat i don't know why but yeah I, that ain't gonna stand up my apologies in advance uh i did lay it flat so yeah this looks really nice i guess while i'm gonna have to lay it back down there's no way it's gonna fall over uh i guess while i have both cranks out i can compare the ej257 which is a sti 2.5 liter crank or a 79 mil crank i think it is to my ej205 which is a uh i think it's uh don't quote me on this but i think it's like a 72 mil crank or something along those lines but we can compare the 2.5 liter crank to a 2.0 liter crank or 2.0 liter crank uh so yeah that'd be something just kind of throw in there and to compare but yeah pretty much today we will be connecting putting our uh bearings for my king's race uh, let's see what we got yeah king race king racing performance bearings in these are 52 mil it's stock stock uh rot the stock come on there we go don't do that but that is very nice packaging uh, it's stock uh, OEM thickness, I'm guessing, because everything is brand new, so we didn't have to uh, run a thicker bearing to accommodate, having to grind down the cam journals. I mean, not cam journals, but the crank journals. Uh, so, yeah. So, OEM thickness, brand new OEM thickness of the journals. No machining done. Uh, so, we do not have to run a thicker uh connecting rod bearing and brand new connecting rods it's 2008 sti connecting rods which is the ej257 connecting rods along with the ej257 nitrided sti crank uh well they're same across the board for the ej257 but these particularly were a 2008 sti rod and yeah uh ordered these straight from subaru uh, I bought my EJ257 crank, nit nitrided crank from uh, Outfront Motorsports in California. Really great company. Very, very good pricing. Uh, I also bought my King's Racing Bearings from King Racing Bearings. Uh, mouthful. King Racing Bearings from Outfront Motorsports. Uh, and over here we got brand new, all from Subaru OEM. Uh, OEM. Uh, case half bolts and that one's actually for the service cover for uh, the oil separator and then, as you see we got brand new case half bolts all OEM all OEM I don't want to lose any yeah all these are OEM and most most of the gaskets are I'm going with are going to be all OEM because I've heard a lot of very, very well-known, very experienced Subaru mechanics that's been in the business for years. Say the rear main and front main uh, crankshaft seals, if you do not use the OEM one and you go with an aftermarket one, they always tend to leak. They always tend to leak. So never had any problems with the OEM ones. So they always recommend going with the OEM ones on the front and the front and the rear main seals. Uh, but yeah, and I also went ahead and bought the OEM cam seals and most of my seals are OEM, such as the case half O-rings. There's a coolant case half O-ring and a oil case half O-ring that we'll have to put in the case has before we put the case has together because they're on the inside which we'll, that'll be in a later video today i just want to 
go ahead and connect my cat uh, put my bearings in my connecting rods and connect my kick yeah connecting rods and torque them down uh search the forums for a consistent torque value for the ej257 crank and i really couldn't find i searched the forums and the factory service manuals and i could not find a consistent uh torque value i got everything ranging from what is it 27 foot pounds of torque all the way up to 39.8 foot pounds of torque so that's a very very broad range of uh torque values so i reached out to some very well known experienced uh super mechanics and they told me to go with 37 i think they said 37.5 they said go ahead and round up to 38 foot pound torque so between 38 and 39.5 foot pounds of torque for the connecting rod end caps so yeah they're a lot they know a lot more than i do so i trust completely trust their values so i guess without further ado we'll get right into it we'll start first by pulling off my connecting rod end caps and wiping the surface down before we put in the bearings and we'll put in the bearings and then we'll start to mock everything up uh when we go to wipe down and clean the bearings uh i'm gonna wipe the back side of them and the and the back side of the surface make sure there was no dirt dust or debris that got in there but i will not wipe down the front because these come pre-coated or pre-lubed and we do for a first start initial startup and we do not want to take any of that coating off so yeah without further ado Alright, uh, since we already went ahead and wiped out the back half of my cam cap, uh, my cam caps, crank, uh, connecting rod caps, we went ahead and wiped the back off. I'm going to go ahead and wipe the back off the bearing as well, but make sure not to wipe the front of the bearing because it's already been pre-coated for the first initial startup. So we'll go ahead and wipe it, just lightly wipe it, make sure there's no dirt, dust, there shouldn't be, it's very nice packaging. And all the all, all we're gonna do next is line up the tang mark, which you can see right here. If my camera will focus, the little tang mark. I'm on focus. Oh well, but you you see the little tang mark. We'll line that up with the tang mark inside of our connecting rod cap which will be located right there you can kind of see right there let's simply drop that in it's just nice and seated make sure that's locked in there and as you can see it's locked nice and locked in you gotta push it all the way down I'll go ahead and pull these bolts. There we go. All right. Make sure it's nice and flush on both sides. No gap. Make sure it's locked in the tang. Pushing up and down. Make sure it's perfectly seated all the way across. And that's good to go. All right, now that we got the connecting rods all connected onto the crank, uh, just got the uh, bolts finger tight. Well, use this. I got them kind of pretty much snugged up, nice and even, both of them, uh, one at a time. Uh, now we can begin to torque them down. Uh, I searched the forums and everywhere else. Couldn't really find a consistent number. Uh, so 
uh, reached out to some very well-known Subi gods or mechanics, uh, and they all agreed on roughly thir They said 37.5, but they said go ahead and round up to 38. But that 38, 39.5, somewhere in that range, should be okay. Because none of my, none of my. This is a brand new crank, so none of it was machined down. Uh, so it's all to OEM spec as far as uh, thickness or bore. So, and we also went with <coughs> King Racing bearings, which are 52 mil, uh, 52 millimeter bearing, which is the, roughly the same as stock as far as thickness. So we don't have to worry about compensating for uh, the crank having to be machined down a couple thousandths of an inch. So we ain't ha we do not have to compensate for any of that. So our torque spec for this is going to be 38. Which I already got my already got it set. 38. It's uh, 38 foot pounds. It's going to be pretty hard to do with one person. You really need somebody to sit here and hold the crank down while you while you torque each bolt. But yeah, uh, I'm gonna see how we can do with just one person. All right, we got the connecting rods all torqued down to 38 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, one thing I want to mention that uh, I didn't show, uh, but we did plastic gauge the bearing tolerances, make sure everything was uh, copacetic, which uh, I'm not going to really cover because, I mean, y'all should be able to know. If not, y'all, there's plenty of hundreds of videos out there. It explains the process of plexiglazing. Uh, plexiglazing. Uh, plexi gauging a lot better than I can I mean I can't even I can't even say the word right now so yeah we'll leave that to the professionals uh, we did uh, plexi uh, plexi gauge all the bearings make sure all the tolerances were in spec uh, all our connection rods are uh, torqued down 38 foot pounds of torque one thing I did want to note uh, I did only show me torquing them down to I think it was 15 or 20 but I torqued them down initially all to I think it was 20 uh, foot pounds of torque uh, and then uh, gradually I went to 25 then 30 then uh, then after 30 I went straight to 38 but just to keep everything nice and copacetic uh, I also only showed me torquing them down to 20 because I didn't want to spend 10 20 minutes just torquing 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 but yeah, y'all get that way. It gives y'all the general gist of uh, our overview of what I've done. Uh, now this is ready to be placed in the case halves. So I gotta get the case halves out, and that'll be in another video though. Uh, this one was just just getting started. Uh, the next one, I guess, would be part two, or maybe even part, well, yeah, probably part two. But that will go in more detail of uh, our crank. Crank thrust, is it crank thrust bearings? It's things of that nature. I also got to go pick up some some silicone. There's a very very special procedure on the case halves of placing the silicone. If not, they will forever leak. That's what I'm told. I uh, have no experience with that. But yeah, we'll follow. Uh, I'll print out the uh, the factory service manual to see the procedure uh, or the placement of the. Uh, silicone and also place our coolant and oil o-rings into our case halves and get everything ready for our new case half bolts and ready for the crank to be put in uh for now i'm going to take this inside keep it out of this heat because it is kind of a little warm but yeah all right i'll see y'all in the next video uh I pre thank you for watching uh feel free to comment like and subscribe if you found any of this information useful, look at that. There's like no play in that. Yeah, look at that. No play. It's moving the whole table, but there's no play in that. It feels nice and tight. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll see y'all in the next video. Don't forget to smash that like button. Uh, subscribe if you ain't already subscribed to stay up to date on the stroker build. Uh, I'll be taking y'all step by step. Sort from sourcing the parts all the way to, I'll probably do the sourcing at the end. That way I can give y'all 
maybe a price breakdown of what it took for me personally to do a somewhat budget build stroker on my old EJ 205 and yeah I also got some other goodies for this build and yeah thank you for watching